Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Following this uh, most interesting session on education, I have the great joy to welcome to our conference Mr. Kostis Hadzidakis, Minister of Labor and Social Affairs. Before starting the Q&A session, let me uh, make a statement personal statement. And because it's my name day today, I have the right to say something more. So, my dear minister, because I have served under your ministry as a chairman of the year when you served as minister of energy, now that you are minister of social affairs, I conclude that you are the person for the hard missions, the missions impossible. You are always successful. This is, it is a very frank, it's not, I'm not paying you a compliment, I really believe that. Thank you. Happy name day. And because this is a uh, quite popular name, I wish a happy name day to all Nicolas in this uh, hall and Nicolette and Nicoles. I have some other version of my voice uh, during, uh, due to a flu. But anyway, you know what my normal voice is. So this is an opportunity to be a little bit innovative and hear me a little bit differently. Thank you. So as a first subject, I would like us to explore something that has been greatly discussed in our committees in regards to the digital card. This has been a most innovative tool introduced uh, that promises to improve uh, the daily lives of both companies and workforce. I suppose that this is a quite complicated measure in its implementation. Have you taken into consideration the particularities uh, of this implementation in the various uh, uh, sectors of economy and the different, the various uh, professions and specialties of the workforce? How are you to deal with this uh, disparity? First of all, let me say that the digital uh, work guard is more than necessary in Greece because we have not that much of a black economy anymore following the great the big fines since uh, 2013 2014 we have mostly the phenomenon the problem of a, a sub declared labor let me give you an example so as to uh, set things clear pekka the so called regional regional centers of control of the social security system afka affected audits that covered 38,000 employees. Of these 38,000 employees, some 80,000 were found working overtime outside their normal hours. I believe, non-paid overtime that is. I believe that uh, a government that declares that wants to implement a socially just uh, just um, policy, labor policy, as all previous governments have claimed, must do something to deal with the subject. We do not ask for something additional by anyone. We merely ask for the strict observation of the law. If we are not for the observation of law, let us raise our hands and say so. But no one has said so. Therefore, we proceed. It was a former proposal by the General Federation of Workers to implement this measure. Almost all uh, political parties were in consensus in the parliament, and we embarked upon implementing it from the banks and the supermarkets. We already today cover 110,000 employees in these two sectors. That is, this measure is in full operation, it's full-fledged. It was not introduced in an arbitrary way. After it has been adopted, there has been a call for tender for the necessary infrastructure as far as IT is concerned. The contractors uh, were assigned, a debate, a, a dialogue was launched. It lasted three months, both with employers and employees, because it was the beginning. And we concluded in a consensus, more or less, more or less, in the implementation of this measure, which currently, with the completion of the electronic digital stock taking in all sectors, which will be completed by December 20, 
will be uh, extended to other sectors of the economy. We will be starting this dialogue uh, will be will start immediately with the security companies and the insurance companies at the first stage. Then we will proceed uh, with uh, the public utilities, which is under our umbrella, and industry, manufacturing, that is, and following that, tourism and uh, restaurants will follow, and catering services. I reiterate this answer, and I'm glad for the question, because I'm given the opportunity to uh, repeat it. We will not be implementing the card the same way everywhere. That will be uh, nonsense. And no one has accused us of being idiots. We have been called uh, uh, new neoliberals, uh, callous, whatever, but no one has accused us uh, of being idiotic. It's an one thing, uh, banks, and it's another thing with public works where there's not even a gate. Well, we can, we can think that that much. So, we have embarked upon a dialogue, both with companies, placing the emphasis on the departments of uh, human resources, which who, these departments know better this subject and who have less difficulties when we discuss with the HR departments, because they know the details and have no phobias and illusions. And on the other hand, we discuss with trade unions. And this is how we'll move ahead. Let me add something, however, which is important. The implementation of digital card may eventually, you have not suspect, suspected that will also help us in uh, dropping social security contributions. Now, why is that? Because evidently, evidently we will have a, a broader base for contributions because uh, EFCA and the Social uh, Security um, Ministry will have more a, a bigger base once we deal with the various violations. So we will not have a mere 5% uh, uh, reduction of Social Security contributions. According to the ILO, we will be able to bring about an even greater reduction precisely because we will be implementing this uh, digital card. And this is, I believe, an excellent piece of news, both for the workforce and the consistent and conscientious employers who will see by the implementation of this uh, measure to be actually rewarded by them paying lower social security contributions. This, I have to underscore, it hasn't been uh, highlighted enough, I believe. Yes, indeed, it is important. Thank you for stressing, putting that out. But is the ministry ready to deal with those uh, incumbent difficulties in the implementation of this measure, especially due to those particularities and disparities? Well, listen, in the e-stock taking, 2.5 million employees will be recorded. We have no illusions on the scale of this endeavor, and this is why we proceed gradually. I would be only happy if I would be were able to say tomorrow we are finished and completed, but this is not true. So we cons we proceed on a consensual basis. We apply the measure depending on the particularities of each sector and on the basis of the proposals that will be uh, the, uh, proposed either by companies or by employees. Anyway, it is a measure for which we have been uh, complimented by the European Commission. It is considered a measure really innovative, a, ref an innovative, a reform which is innovative even for the European Union, and it is definitely a measure that we will help in having a guarantee on the timetable and the overtime of an employee, but also a very fair competition between companies. Because until now, there were those companies, there were companies, and there are many of them that are consistent, uh, that uh, um, observe the law and pay the contributions to the fullest, and this is known, it is proven, it can be proven, and there are also other companies that do not do so. 
So the implementation of the digital work guide will reward those who are compliant. And we usually they said, what do you do? How do you word the compliant? Well, this is precisely what we do. This is what we do for the compliant ones. And on the other hand, we deal with the uh, violation. If we do not want to ban the violation, let us have a movement for them. But let's say it, say it clearly, state it clearly. Thank you. I have a question on that, but I keep it for the end, says Mr. Bagatellus. Let me corroborate what you just said. If I were to say to the HR department of my company that we would be speaking today, that I would be handed not two pages of questions, but a whole volume. So let me shift uh, gear. In 2021, the Ministry of Labor uh, made uh, an open international call of tender for the administrative code of the um, labor law codification. The call for tender attracted great interest and the project was eventually adjudicated to a joint venture for the overall services and execution of all the uh, works demanded for the codification of uh, labor law. Could you please inform us vis-a-vis -vis the procedures, the progress of the process, and the delivery time. First of all, how do you know all that? Well, we have various committees that prepare those questions, that they are very knowledgeable. Well, I, personally, I didn't know that you were such an expert on such subjects. No, no, you're right. I'm not an expert. We've got special committees for that. Okay. Let me tell you that we proceed uh, with codifications. It is uh, by coincidence that yesterday, the official gazette uh, was to be announced of labor codification, that is, the personal labor law, and it will follow the beginning of the year, the codification of the overall labor law. What, however, was codified is more difficult. We here proceed with the codification of social security legislation as well. We will be ready by summer of 2023 for the Greek uh, uh, public administration. Elections will be ready. We consider that we will have again the new mandate, but anyway, elections will intervene. And then what will follow is the Central Committee of Codification will process, as it happened with uh, the uh, individual labor law under Mr. Stavropoulos, who is the um, vice president of the state court, and it will take its course. Let me say something for, for the uh, legalists that we hear. Codification is facilitating lawyers, barristers, and their clients, and for the courts, of course. It has been affected with all the care and due diligence that is demanded, but first, it doesn't revert the existing legislation, and uh, second, in case of doubt or objection, the original, uh, the original uh, text uh, uh, Fefoy is the one that is uh, in force. Not new. There are no new dispositions introduced. Nothing of what is already in force is reverted. But we do facilitating work of codification, as it is given by the word, which had been lagging its feet since the beginning of the previous decade. Anyway, we set that as a first priority. We said so, we stated, and we do it in both cases. So I come back. I revert to my original. You are the ones for the missions impossible. You are the one who closes pending issues. So, Hellenic American Chamber of Commerce. So some aspects that are more uh, global aspect vis-a-vis -vis social security. Our country has made bilateral uh, 14 bilateral agreements and more specifically, 11 classic type agreement and one agreement amongst them with the USA. I would like your comment vis-a-vis -vis the importance of those contracts 
And I would also like to ask you whether any plans for further bilateral social security agreements that uh, the state is willing to sign. Yes, these agreements are most important. 11 are horizontal and three are of uh, partial force. They help the insured persons for the transfer of their rights for their pensions, which are such of such big interest, the pending pensions. Help us in paying them more quickly when more than one state is involved. And it's not only about the pensions of Greeks living in the USA or any other foreign country. It also concerns pensions of Americans on other nationalities who have spent some years in Greece. In EFCA, we are involved in both cases. And when we, when we say pending international pensions, we entail both aspects. Anyway, those agreements have helped us. We are currently in negotiation with more countries, but uh, it is not allowed uh, out of code of uh, ethics uh, of a diplomatic uh, uh, practice to, to, to name names to state who we are discussing with. We want to proceed, and we are at your disposal at the Hellenic American Chamber of Commerce. If you believe that there are pending issues vis-a-vis -vis these international agreements, especially with the USA, we're here to pay heed to what you have to say. Thanks a lot. I'm certain that my colleagues have already taken note of that, and I thank you. Now, you touched upon the issue of pensions. Yes, there's not a single day that I don't touch about, about this subject or not have some interlocutor touching upon this subject. So, first of all, what is the stage of paying the uh, a posteriori uh, supplementary pending supplementary pensions. First of all, let me tell you that the issue of the main pending uh, pensions is closed. That was not uh, easy. We were bequeathed one million fifty nine thousand different cases of pensions, various problems of any kind you might name. We started dealing with that. Now we have concluded with the main pensions pending from 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20. Today we have approximately 5,500 pending pensions from 2021, which are problematic in various notions. They either owe money above the limits or there's still no medical uh, ruling for uh, disability pensions or it appears that we lack documents. That is, uh, documents do not suffice to uh, have the foundation for such right. There's a task force dealing with all those aspects, so to deal with them. What is most important is that in 2022, we have reached a point where 85% of the requests has been covered. This means that EFCA enters a pace of normalcy, has found its pace. And most importantly, on the new requests, Pensions are paid on a median uh, basis within 60 days, while in Germany it takes 74 days, for instance. This is international data, not ours. This is a major conquest. We consciously left behind the complementary pensions because it is obvious why when one speaks of main pensions, of course, you must put the priority on main pensions. You are managers, most of you, so you know well that you can't do everything overnight, especially in an organization such as EFCA, where when I took it, the mandate had 48 percent of the mandate of the complaints of all public administration, second ranking the tax administration with 11 percent. So you realize what is the electric chair that I was put on. Yes, yes, we can put it in accumulation. Olympic Airways, pensions, yes. Now we have uh, 100,000 pendings um, 
complementary pensions which are being uh, dealt uh, by the task force or the same people who were in charge of the main pensions. And I believe that's an issue of months, not many months, to deal with this issue as well, which is far easier to deal with because once you have the main pension issued, the responsible employees are greatly facilitated to calculate uh, and issue the complementary one as well. Thank you. Well, high time I, I sipped a little bit my tea. Okay, I'll, I'll read out the whole question, sip your tea. Given the consecutive crisis and in view of the current development uh, trends and inflation pressure, is there a case to increase to increase pensions? What said the minister? He said what? Increase the pensions? I thought he said more. Increase them more because they have already been increased. That is, a such an increase has been decided upon. There will be a horizontal increase after 12 years of 7.75%. This is an increase that is a produce of an equation that it was set by an equation by formula that was introduced by Syriza. This is that is the increase of inflation of uh, the um, price index plus the increase of the GDP divided by two. And this gives us 7.75 percent. But we also have introduced three additional increases. The fourth uh, installment of from the recalculation of the so-called Vrutsis law, which concerns 225 to 130,000 citizens. The previous regards uh, 1,724,000 citizens of uh, or out of a total of 2,664 we give for the first time the third time this extraordinary complement of 250 euros for christmas covering approximately 1.5 million people and the extraordinary solidarity pension which has been abolished after many years following negotiations that the prime minister has had in brussels that regards 900,000 people anyway not to pester you anymore with figures one out of two pensioners will uh, have the benefit of two out of these four increases, and one out of two will see, starting from January and onwards, when we will also have the horizontal increases, we'll see an increase equal to one additional pension per year. Why didn't we offer more? Because we have no money, you cannot afford it, that's why. People ask me on many occasions, various uh, journalists, which is the politician that would want to give even more, even the more restrained amongst them, I'm also included, and definitely the prime minister. There's no politician who would like to be uh, unpleasant, but one would become even more unpleasant if implementing a uh, bad policies that will be found ahead of us. And the previous decade is not such a remote past so as to forget what had happened with implementation of uh, policies which were beyond our means. Yes, you're absolutely right, says Mr. Bagatsalos. Let us conclude with a question regarding uh, the contributions evasions. In the framework of the 18th tax forum that we have held and we discussed this issue, to what extent do these uh, measures taken over the last years um, perform? What's the produce? What's the yield? Well, the answer here will be quite complex because when we speak of contributions, especially over the last years, we have been three and a half years in power. Two years are lost with the pandemic and with uh, measures introduced which were productive well, that means don't pay contributions and so forth. So we can't have easily the right data to present. What I can tell you, however, is that precisely because our economy is resilient, no matter what the problem of evasion, this gives a boost to the funds. For instance, this, all that what I'm mentioning is official data. The beginning of this year, 
we calculated that uh, in the fund uh, of uh, uh, complementary uh, solidarity security, we will have 60,000 new employees enrolled because in 2022, those who first got the first job are enrolled in this fund. That was our, our calculation and focus. We were continuously surprised in summer, we calculated that there would be 80,000, and now it seems that we'll have 120. This is a pleasant surprise, far above our forecast, which means that there is a dynamism in the economy that we haven't imagined it ourselves. And of course, this is not something that's out of chance. It's the result of the overall interventions of the government in the economy on tax uh, administration, on licensing, on uh, procedures, uh, streamlining, and so forth. And therefore, this trend is not limited only to youngsters. The reduction of unemployment from 17.5 to 11.6 percent in October as well, despite the fact that there's a great seasonality increase, shows a lot. It's very telling. Doesn't mean that we should be over optimistic. Very intensive work must be done in EFCA beyond the issue of pensions and servicing the citizens. This 1555 law, a lot has to be done for a better organization of the service itself. And we proceed into that with the integrated uh, IT system of EFCA. Until now, for instance, KEAO, which is the center of uh, areas uh, to EFCA, as it was uh, established, does not communicate with the rest of EFCA. That is, you go and pay your contributions, if there are areas or whatever, and then you ask for a certificate of solvency, and you can't have it issued. And they tell you you can't have it issued because it seems that you still are in debt. The systems do not communicate. And EFCA does not communicate with the remaking EFCA. It's not just a mere database that has to communicate. The traditional EFCA, since we had a merger, no matter how, of so many funds, has 88 different databases. It's the absolute chaos. Therefore, the system was reconstructed, re-engineered from the beginning. It, now the call of data is in process, along with the digitization of uh, the files, so as to be able to put our house in order, but also deal in a more integrated and uh, global way the issue of the evasion in payments. But Additionally, this will also dealt with what I've said previous, previously, the further reduction of social security contributions, because it's far easier to pay if they are normal and far more difficult if they are skyrocketed. This, we know, it's a basics from a global economy, and we try to be taught by the lessons of the advanced countries of Europe and the world. Thank you, Mr. Minister. A good way to conclude. I warmly thank you for being with us in the 33rd GAS. If you haven't understood, the minister is also a dear friend of mine. But beyond that, objectively speaking, he is a person who really expresses law and order, order and rationality. Thank you. Thank you for one more invitation to the Hellenic American Chamber of Commerce at your disposal. Such kind of meetings, I have greatly missed them, to be honest. I'm away to a great extent from the business world. And no, I'm not uh, as I used to be in my previous mandates. Now I'm more in contact with the employees, the disabled persons, the pensioners, not the businessmen anymore. So I have missed such kind of conferences. But you know, the ministry I'm currently am offers a huge satisfaction, to be honest. This is the satisfaction of dealing with problems of poor people or problem 
problems of people in dire need. And this uh, is a huge, it's valuable in politics because you immediately see the result in front of you. It's a great moral reward. And amongst the various difficulties that I mentioned, I must point out that the decision of the prime minister to send me there offers me this reward. I didn't expect it, but there it is. I've got it. Thank you.